signals, inflammatory mediators, and bacterial cell signals, which, when circulated through to the feet, can instruct the laminae to separate. In this slide, we can see on the top left-hand corner of our cartoon diagram, the healthy, fat-looking laminal structures, which have nice, healthy cells lining the edge. This corresponds to the inset of the image on the right-hand side. As the disease develops, the cell junctions become distracted and separate. The cell laminae wither and are separated and distracted from their seat in the laminae. As we can see, this corresponds to a withering and an abnormal histopathological section, as we can see in the larger inset on the right image. Once this separation occurs, the pain and structural defect which the hooves have suffered results in not only laminitis in one foot, but can often be both front feet, and in some very unfortunate horses, as we can see presented here in our video, can occur in all four feet. Once the insult or disease which affects the laminae causing laminitis has started, several factors indicate how quickly or how severe the laminitis will become. The most important of these is the weight of the horse, because the separation of the hoof capsule from the pedal bone is a physical phenomenon determined by how tightly the laminae are attached to each other and how the distraction forces associated with the weight of the horse and the movement of the pedal bone cause the separation to occur. The combination of these